Number one says that Diego wrote um, the function equal to x plus 2 times x minus 4 as an example of a function whose graphs has x-intercepts at negative 4 and 2. What was his mistake? So in order for them to have x-intercepts, that's where the graph or the function needs to equal 0. And when we multiply two numbers together, okay, like we have here, um, and they equal zero. Anytime you multiply two numbers together, either factor could equal zero. So we want to set x plus two equal to zero, and we want to set x minus four equal to zero, and then we need to solve these. So when you solve, okay, you do the opposite to bring this over. So then we're going to get x equals negative two and x equals positive four because we're gonna add four to get this to be zero. So then we get zero plus four and four. So these zeros are gonna be opposite of the factors. Um, number two, write a possible equation for the polynomial whose graph has horizontal or x intercepts at these values. Um, so we'll use the idea that we just did in the last function, um, that the zeros are going to produce factors that are the opposite. So if we had x equals 2 to go backwards from this, to bring this 2 back over to the x, we would subtract 2 from each side. And then we'd get x minus 2 equals 0, and this reveals our factor of x minus 2. And then let's pause on this one for a second, but let's do this, let's do this one. Okay, so if we have x equals negative three, then we would add three to bring it back over to the x. So we'd get x plus three equals zero, and here would be our factor. Now, the reason I paused on this one is that there's a couple different ways you can do um, the x equals negative one half. So if we do x equals negative one half, one thing you can do is just add the one half back over. And this is why it says write possible equations because there's multiple different ways this could be done. So then we could get x plus one half equals zero. So this would be fine to do this as your um, last factor, okay? So this is possibility number one, okay? Another way you could do it which would be possibility number two, would be um, that you could multiply both sides by two to get rid of the fraction. So then we would have um, 2x equals negative one, then you could add one back over. So then you'd get the factor of 2x plus one equals zero. So either of these two green factors um, can go at the end here. I'm gonna do the 2x plus one. Okay, but so either either of those are fine. So here's a possible function with those zeros. All right, number three, which polynomial functions graph is shown? So we're going to be looking at, they gave us all these factors, and then we can see the zeros here. Um, so we can see the zeros on the graph. So let's just mark one of these zeros. Okay, so I'm going to mark this zero at negative four. That's the first one that I'm going to focus on. So we're going to be looking at these last factors here. So I'm looking for factors that would equal out to negative four. So let's try this first one when we set them equal to zero. So we have x plus four equals zero. So if I subtract four to both sides, I get a zero of negative four. Okay, so this factor is going to produce a 0 of negative 4. So this one could be good, this one could be good, this would be bad, and so would this. x minus 4 would produce a 0 at positive 4. So we're done with option C, and we're done with option D. So then let's take a look at um, one of these other zeros. So let's take a look at um, negative 1. And then let's figure out what factor would go with that. So when we take a look, these are both x plus 1. That's good because x plus 1 equal to 0, we would subtract 1 from both sides, and they would both give us a 0 of negative 1. So both of these are good. So then we're just deciding between this one that's going to give us 
um, a z which one's going to give us a zero of three. Whoops. So we're taking a look here. So if we want the zero to be three, so when we solve this, we want the factor to be the opposite. So we're going to want this one because when I do X minus three equals zero, when we add three to both sides, we get positive three for our, whoops, positive three for our zero, which is what we had here. So then we would not want that. So A would be our answer for this. All right, number four says, which expression is equivalent to 3x plus 2 times 3x minus 5? So we can see that they've expanded it because we don't see any more parentheses. So this means that they're going to be multiplying. So I'm going to do the multiplying where I just distribute each term, sometimes called the FOIL method. So I'm going to do 3x times 3x, which is 9x squared. Then I'm going to do 3x times the negative 5 which is negative 15x. Then I'm going to distribute the 2 to both pieces. So 2 times 3x is 6x, and 2 times negative 5 is negative 10. Then I'm just going to combine like terms in the middle here. So I've got the 9x squared, negative 15x, and 6x is negative 9x, and then we still have that negative 10. So now we're just going to go through and match it to the answer. So it's definitely not A. B is missing the middle term. C has the wrong middle term. Um, so D has all of the terms the same. So D is the equivalent expression. Number five, what is the value of 6 times x minus 2 times x minus 3 plus 4 times x minus 2 times x minus 5? when x equals negative 3. So we're just going to take this um, negative 3 here, and we're going to plug it in everywhere we see x. So we're going to do negative 3 here. We're going to do negative 3 here, here, and here. So let's go ahead and simplify some of this. So we've got 6 times um, this parenthesis, and then we'll have times this, plus we'll have the 4 times two different sets of parentheses. So let's simplify in this first set. This is negative 3 minus 2. That's negative 5. And then the second set is negative 3 minus 3. That's negative 6. Then we have the plus 4. Negative 3 minus 2 is negative 5. And then negative 3 minus 5 is negative 8. So then we'll have... Um, we're just going to go ahead and simplify these. So 6 times um, negative 5 is negative 30 times negative 6 is positive 180 for that first part. 4 times negative 5 is negative 20 times negative 8. So negative 20 times negative 8 is positive 160. Add those together and we get 340. And then number six says match each polynomial function with its leading coefficient. So remember we find the leading coefficient by multiplying all of these first and highest degree terms. So we're going to do x times 2x times 4x. So that's going to be 8. And then we'd have the x cubed. Um, so the lead coefficient is just that front number, the two, or sorry, the 8. Um, so this is going to be number 2. B, we're going to do um, 1 half. Okay, so the 1 half times the 1 times the 2 times the 4. Okay, so this will give us our leading coefficient. If we multiply the x's in, we get that leading term. So 1 half times 2 is 1 times 4 is 4. So our leading term would be 4x cubed. Our leading coefficient would just be the 4, and we can see that in number 3. Um, next one, we would have 5 times x times 2x. So 5 times x is 5x times 2x is 10x squared times 4x is 
40 x cubed. So then that lead coefficient is just the 40. That's number one. Um, e, we have a negative 1 times x is negative 1x times 2 is negative 2x squared times 4x is negative 8x cubed. Lead coefficient is just the negative 8. That's number 5. So then that would leave number um, 4 left for E. And we could look at it. It's going to be, whoops, 1 fourth times 2 is 1 half times 4 is 2. So then we get that 2.